being the parent of like a little kid, I think has gotten a lot harder than when I was raising my daughter. She's 23 now. And ah, man, I got to tell you the decisions you have to make and the things you have to monitor and protect your children from today has gotten a lot harder. What do you give them that's still entertaining, but also aligns with your values? You know, we've talked about way FM being a product that you don't have to filter, but like, if you got Netflix in your house, you got to have the filter on. And even Disney plus you have the same problem. Oh, but I'll tell you, Disney plus has been disappointing to me as a parent and some of the things they've chose to put on there and like you got to watch it you mm-hmm. know and that's why it's so nice to have something if i was raising little kids I would do Pure Flix subscription, man, because you've got content on there that you're not having to filter out. And as a parent, I mean, I know we want to be involved in our kids' lives, but sometimes you need to park them in front of the TV and take 10 <laughs> minutes to yourself. That's why Pure Flix is a great option for uh, families. you got family stuff, obviously. They're even dabbling in some drama. Uh, yes, and uh, Pure Flix originals. Like, I saw the uh, movie on their uh, Strong Fathers, Strong Daughters, and I have to tell you, you cried. I, I did. There was three <laughs> times. I won. Three times I did. I wept and uh, I was moved, and it was a great movie. And I think if I was raising my child now, I think Pure Flix would be definitely a part of my family's entertainment plan. So if you'd like to try Pure Flix, text Pure, that's P U R E, to 91979 to get your one week free trial. Faith and Family Entertainment with no ads on your favorite devices. Welcome to the Wally Show Aftercast. I guess we should start calling it the Betty and Gavin Aftercast. I know, at least at least for these uh, weeks. Yeah, when he's yeah, enjoying when he's, himself when somewhere he's else. gone for sure. Um, so we talked about this. We talked about this list in Gavin's news, but I thought we could dive into it a little bit deeper. Um, it's the forty things you should do by the time you are forty. I think these are good lists to have sure. because, of course you want to you want to live your life to the fullest you don't want to waste it you know just in front of the tv playing video games or watching tv but also i think it's you have to use some kind of wisdom with it as well because this is a list that was put together that's what the world tells you you should accomplish by 40 yeah and it's you know all things that i think can be very like self-centered and very Mm -hmm. you know it it takes you know a lot of you know serving others out of the equation it's just uh go and you know yolo live your life right do stuff for you exactly yeah so um a couple of these things like i mean i'm i'm close i don't want to admit it but i am close to getting no, to 40 you're not. um but there was definitely in the relationship department which which we didn't talk about in the news but um a couple of those things for sure uh i haven't gotten to <laughs> At close to 40. But I think this is something that I did want to say. If you are like me, coming close to 40, or maybe you're not, just maybe you're not in the stage of life that you thought you'd be in by the age that you are now, I think it's very important that you surround yourself with people that support you and give you love. Not that you need to just get into relationships so that you can get out of them what you want. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important that you surround yourself with people that care about you and don't push you into something that is not good for you. Yeah. By that, what I mean is I have plenty of friends that I've seen and even ones that I, you see this on the news all the time. Divorce is a huge thing. And don't they say like 50% of marriages end in divorce? I don't know the exact numbers, but it does feel like the world says that as soon as you stop feeling this, you know, the feeling of love mm-hmm. or as soon as things get hard, like it's OK to to run because you should be happy because everything is still about you. Whereas, right. you know, the idea of love in a in a, you know, a, a faith standpoint and a Christian standpoint is that you do make that choice every single day. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, there's that song that um, Sle- uh, what no, it wasn't Selena Gomez. What's the other one that she's using pronouns now that are like they Oh, them? Demi Lovato? Demi Lovato, yeah. She had a song out, and it was something like, you're nobody unless you have somebody. And mm. that song drives me crazy because it's such a horrible, unhealthy message to it's, give to people. Especially for young people. Who, yeah, her think, audience. Yeah, I think a lot of kids these days, because we're seeing this in our youth group at church, I think a lot of kids these days are struggling with feeling worth and feeling what like makes them worthy. And a lot mm-hmm. of times I think it's based in their relationships with people and their standing in like their social peer groups. Because 
I've been seeing this in the in, with the kids. It's very hard to feel like you're worth something if you don't have like a standing in per se in people. If you don't feel like you fit in, then it's hard to feel worth. Yeah, it. and you are looking for that group of people yeah. that you feel like you belong with. So uh, a couple of these things that made the list were um, have your heart broken, get married, and have a kid. And I think we've talked about this in past um, aftercast, but. It's so important that, like, for instance, I had a friend of mine. She wanted all her life to just be a mom. Yeah. That's all she wanted. And she was getting up there. Now she's like in her early 30s and she still isn't married, still doesn't have a kid. And she's feeling that clock tick. Sure. I get it because women, you only have a certain amount of time and. If you don't have kids between then and now, it gets more dangerous. And there's right. just that it's sense just, of, yeah, it's like, do you want to be a mom? Right. It's at, not going to happen. At 50 plus years old. Exactly. Raising a 10 year old. So she uh, found a guy online and they started dating. Um, he definitely had some red flags. She looked past those. Mm. And now she has two kids with him. And there have there's been physical um assault charges that have been put on between the couple. And I think about those two kids that are involved in that relationship, like they're having to pay the price for a decision that my friend made Sure, because she was nervous that she wasn't going to become a mom. So she settled with a guy that she knew had red flags. And now those children are going to have a broken relationship with their dad because I don't even know if my friend and her used to be husband are even on talking terms anymore. So I I think about I don't want to settle and get with a guy because that's what the world tells me I should Mm -hmm. be doing or that I don't matter unless I have a guy with me and then end up having a kid that's going to have to pay the price for what I decided. Absolutely. And I feel like in the last, you know, because I've I've only known you for three-ish years now, and I feel like the way that you're living life right now, I feel like you have built up like a really good foundation of people that you just want to do life with. And I think that that's probably more important than finding some, you know, equation that the world tells yeah. you makes you happy and makes, you know, what life is all about. Right. And and I even was having a conversation with a friend last night. Uh, we were talking about how marriage is a sacrifice. Yep. So, you know, when you walk up to that altar, a lot of people walk up to it thinking, what can I get from this relationship? But really, you should be thinking, what can I give to this relationship? Because you are dying to yourself. Mm-hmm. And so... Just because you think I'm going to find a guy and my life is going to be fixed, that's actually not the case. No, we don't fix lives. No, no. And the same can be said for wives as well. It's, yeah, it's not going to solve your problems. No, if anything, it's going to bring in more problems. Oh, yeah, because you, you know? can't do anything on your own terms anymore, which is exactly a great thing some days and you know, still you know, a sacrifice others, <laughs> I'll say. But I did, I had a, um, you know, I, 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 I've had my moments. I won't say that I'm perfect because I'm definitely not. But in my 37 years, I have had situations where I thought, you know, I I want to find someone. I do want to spend my life with someone. But when I look back at those times, it was because all my friends were in relationships and they were starting to have kids. So now they have to make their schedules work for the kids and their husband, and I'm just free to do whatever I want to do. Um, I was spending a lot more time with my parents, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I had a conversation with God, and I said, listen, if you're not going to bring a guy in my life, then I want someone I can do life with. Mm -hmm. And he definitely answered that prayer through providing With me, like my current roommate, Nicole, like she is definitely an answer to prayer because she's in the same boat as me and she's not rushing and she doesn't think that a guy is going to make her life any better. And so I'm thankful to be surrounded by people because through her, I've met so many more awesome people that are in similar situations and... It, it is true, like what my mom always told me growing up, the people you surround yourself with, they will have a, a say in how you 
conduct your oh sure yourself around people or what you believe. So it's so important to surround yourself with people that have a like mind as you, a same faith as you, so that when you are in those weak moments of thinking, what am I doing with my life? You can, you know, find refuge or find encouragement through that circle of friends yeah. that you have. And I know a lot of people, I think, can say like, oh, like just turn to God with all this. Turn to God like God will help you with all this. And I think that the way he does help you is by putting those people in your oh, life. Oh, for and it's, sure. I think sometimes we can also even still say no to the good things that are being put in our life and reject that because we still want what we think we've been wanting for yes. a really long time. And so we sometimes can even pass over those things that are right. good things. In our lives, and there's good people, because sometimes you can put good people on the back burner in pursuit of the wrong people, which right. I think is such a, a, a bummer thing to do. Right. And I think I've written about this before, maybe in a blog or on my social media, I don't remember. But, you know, I it was kind of like I was hit in the face with a two by four by God <laughs> when I was um, thinking to myself, like, I don't have a guy in my life. Like, does my, does my um, quality of life, does it even you know, live up to the standards of what the world says. And according to the world, it doesn't. But what God showed me was that if anything, I'm surrounded by love. Yeah. It's, it's not the testosterone type, (laughs) 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 you know, but I, I have so much love and I think it's important to, like you were saying, to have that thankfulness in your life. Mm -hmm. When you have gratitude, you don't take for granted anything in your life. No. And I think it's so important to be thankful for what you do have, because if you do focus on that one thing that you don't have in your life, that's going to ruin the rest of the time you have here on earth. And it's so important to enjoy what you have right oh, yeah. now. Enjoy the time you have right now. And if anything, watch a couple of Dateline episodes <laughs> and you'll really rethink, I shouldn't settle because I don't want to end up in a shallow It'll grave. talk you out of a messy love story. I'm just saying. Um, another thing was uh, career stuff. So it said earn a degree, uh, reach management level, get fired, start a business, land your dream job, volunteer, and save for retirement. Um, I think these all of these are good. really good things. Except for the fired thing. Oh, yeah. That's a bad thing. But I think it's important that you um, you can manage a healthy work life balance. Uh-huh. And if you let your work life get ahead of your life life, then you're you're gonna be on your deathbed thinking, what what did I just do? Yeah. Like, like, and I, nobody's I, thinking about their management level no. on their deathbed. And like I've seen the people in our company that are managers of other human beings. Mm-hmm. And I will say, I think that they are really like meant for that job. I think they're really built for it well. And I think they do it excellently. The vision I have of like if I were to be doing that does not seem as fun per mm-hmm. se. Like it's not as fun. And this is, you know, this is the dream job. We do silly stuff. We get to talk to artists. We get to do, you know, life mm-hmm. on air, which is a lot of fun. I don't know, you know, when I turn 30, when I'm getting through my thirties, if I'm mm-hmm. going to start getting that tug to do more, to have more oversight on things, even if, if, if I'm good enough for something like that. But mm-hmm. yeah, the whole management thing is a little yeah, and I think freaky. I think too, like I, I heard my pastor say just this past Sunday, like God will will equip you for what he's yeah. called you to do. He's just looking for someone to say yes. So I'm not saying you should just say no to everything or live in fear. No. But you, I think you can say yes. But like I said, it's important to keep your priorities uh, straight. Uh, traveling. We talked about that. Yeah. Traveling is a big thing. Living arrangements. Have an apartment in the middle of the city. No, no thank you. I, I don't want to do that. Buy a house and have a mortgage. Listen, I haven't bought a house yet. I want to, but also I don't want to be in major debt either. So oh, no. this is another thing that I was saying about like the world tells you, you need to do these things at this certain age. And while it could be true for some, it may not be true for everyone. No. And I'm, you know, in that mindset of, it also depends on the place that you live. Cause I don't want to buy a house in Nashville personally. <sighs> I was in Nashville yesterday and I was like, why would anyone want to live here? Oh, I do love the city. I like, don't. Oh, it's it's still fun for I me. Don't. But the pricing of housing up there is just insanity. Like there's very oh, I know. little room for something under two hundred thousand dollars that's like right. a worthwhile place to live in. Well 
and it's not going down. No, but I was talking with Ruth, a, a girl that we work with here at the station. I was talking with her yesterday, and she was saying, I told her, I said, I have a, a few friends of mine that they are just now renting a home, and it's costing them $3,000 a night. month. Now, it's a four-bedroom, three-bath. Are they splitting that? Yeah, three ways. Oh. So, it's 1000 each. But they were going to be in an apartment with way less room, no guaranteed parking, and neighbors upstairs that yep. who knows upstairs, what if they'll be doing aerobics downstairs at 3 a.m. Terrible. Yeah. So at least they're getting the value for their money. Yeah. But that just goes to show like what the 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 the, the what, market. Yeah, what yeah. it's doing. Well apartments three thousand dollars. Apartments these days are insane. I think that we left at a good time. We pay, I think it's eight fifty a month for a two bedroom, one bathroom house up That's in the awesome. National, which is a phenomenal price mm-hmm. for something with two bedrooms in it and a yeah. backyard for our dogs and all this mm-hmm. stuff. But I'll be honest, I would not want to buy that home because there's stuff in the roof that I don't trust. <laughs> and that foundation also looks very untrustworthy. Yeah. And I have renter's insurance for a good reason, I right. think. And but for us, that's like a, a a smack deal for us. Like if 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 we were in a two bedroom apartment up in Nashville, it probably costs like fourteen hundred a month, which oh, it's I can't ridiculous. afford. Ridiculous. Yeah. Well, and this makes me sound old, but my first apartment that I lived in, I was nineteen years old. It was six sixty a month mm. for a two bedroom, nice. two bath apartment. Nice. So I paid three thirty a month oh, from yeah. my side of things. I loved uh, my college apartment, or yeah, college apartment was I think it was fourteen forty a month, split uh, split four ways, which was oh. like a great deal when you get to live with your best friends and everything. Yeah, like that's totally fine with me. But uh, they don't <laughs> give you that deal when you're, you know, an adult. I know, I know. My dad was telling me. Um, his first apartment, he paid fifty dollars. What? Fifty dollars a month. <laughs> I pay but, more for my electricity. And <laughs> but my, I, I will say this: <laughs> I think that was the apartment that he said when he first moved in. He was poking around in the fireplace or something, like maybe starting a fire or something in the fireplace, and a huge swarm of birds Ooh. came down. In everything. So it's not saying it was the best place. It was maybe 50, a $50 value. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, right. That's horrifying. Uh, yeah. I know. Um, okay, so let's talk about this. I found this thing that said uh, a new poll shows that the average person has 13 TV shows and 16 movies on their watch list. So that averages to about 104 hours worth of content. That is a lot time. We watch a lot of TV these days. You know, I enjoy TV. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to just step back and not think for a little bit. But here are the top 15 shows on people's watch list. I want to see if any of these Mm. line up with us. Uh, Stranger Things. Love that show. Watch it as soon as it comes out. I watched that too, but I can't imagine how many hours were spent watching it because yeah that was four seasons we've had so far hour long of the last season was weird with like two hour long episodes it was was ridiculous long yeah uh the walking dead did you ever try that i did i watched a good six seasons of that but it kind of just leaves you feeling sad because it's just a lot of even the first episode it's horrifying a lot of people dying yeah i Uh. i may have told you this story i don't know but i i I think i was sick one weekend and my roommate at the time she had season two on dvd so i just sat and watched it so i sent i spent all day saturday and sunday binging the show i don't looking back i don't know why i did that but i remember when i left for work the next day which was a monday i had to be up early so it's still dark outside oh and i'm living in an apartment (laughs) complex there's this guy he must have been on his last leg of his running that oh, that morning. I thought you were going to say of his life. No, 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 of his run for that okay. morning. But he was coming around the corner and he was like, you know, he looked tired yep, and he was just trudging jogging. along. And I caught myself thinking, oh my gosh, it's a walker <laughs> and hurrying run. to get in my car. Nice. And that's when I knew I can't watch this show, nor should I think anyone should, because it no. is, it's like they're pushing the envelope as far as they can to yep. see what they can get away with. And it is terrible. No, it's so graphic. It doesn't leave you feeling like healthy at the end of it all. No, I don't think, <laughs> no. Because I've gotten to that point with a lot of shows these days. I do want a happy ending 
in most of my television. Like, I want the Hallmark ending for a lot of things. Like Gilmore Girls I just want you be, every time. I just want to be happy. <laughs> I don't want to be sitting there being like, man, everyone just died. Yeah, and I know. I know. I guess I'll go back to my life now. Uh, this one, The Crown. So, you, I think you're the only one I... I'm in the no, middle of it. We're we're on season two. Okay, so you've gotten further than I thought. You only watched a couple episodes. Well, we took a, a long break, but since oh, uh, of Queen, the Queen Elizabeth's passing, good call. We got back in it. So it's it it's got that drama, and I love like the English, you know how they say things. Um, the Mandalorian, oh, no, love it. Hard pass. That's fine. Uh, Friends. Oh, it's a classic. It's one you can fall asleep to. Yeah. You I'll can watch that. any episode at any point or another, and you're going to be fine. Yeah. And then Avatar, The Last Airbender. You've already lost me. That sounds uh, incredibly boring. <laughs> it's so not boring. What but is it? It's also for like 10-year-olds and 26-year-olds who watched it when they were 10-year-olds. It's an animated television show that was put out on Nickelodeon, mm-hmm. again, when I was probably like 10 years old, mm-hmm. so 15 plus years ago. Mm-hmm. And it's based around this world. Oh, no. Where every person fits into one of four tribes. Oh, so this is like Harry Potter. No, no, no. It's it's similar, but it's 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 more about the the whole world can use uh bend the elements of the world. You've got water benders, air benders, <laughs> earth benders, and fire benders. And there's a war and you don't care. But <laughs> it's a good show. It sounds like Captain America. Do you know that cartoon? Yeah. It was back in the 80s. Okay, yeah, but yeah, remember, yeah. Like, they could like put their rings together and they're like, earth, wind, fire, water, I, Do you whatever. know what you're talking about? Yes. It sounds like that. Yeah. It, it's similar to that, except it's the whole world can do those uh, with those abilities. Yeah, that sounds horrible. I know. It's. It, it, <laughs> I would never recommend it to you. But for a lot of us out there, you know, who are, you know, younger... Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, we're going back to but that. You don't watch a lot of animated stuff to no. start with. That's, I love cartoons. Yes, I do. But, but you that, like the classic cartoons. Yeah, I'm I talking about you, like Scooby Doo, Tom and Jerry. He, well, oh really? It's kind of the same thing over it, and over. It is. I like Looney Tunes. Scooby Doo's um, the best. I loved Hey Arnold from back okay, in the nineties. Yeah. Um, this fits in. This more. just fits into our new Angry realm. Beavers. Whoa. Is that on like is that like an it was a Nickelodeon Arkansas thing? Show? No, okay. it was like it was, I think it was on Nickelodeon, but it was like more early two thousands, maybe nineties. Okay, like 90s. I think I was too young and for that. SpongeBob SquarePants. You did watch SpongeBob. I love oh, SpongeBob. I didn't know you liked SpongeBob. Yes, my favorite episode. <laughs> He's the best. Have you seen the one where he like? He has bad breath, but he doesn't realize it. He just thinks he's ugly. <laughs> he's like, and so I am ugly and yeah, I am proud. And he's like something like, look at me or whatever. And like he jumps on this guy's cars and like on his windshield. And the guy's like, my eyes, my eyes. I think it's so funny. There's an early episode of SpongeBob that I didn't understand until I was quite young. And it was the episode where they find on like the back of the Krusty Krab, there's like a, a dumpster. And it says like Squidward is a... Bleep or it something. It says bleep. On? No, but oh. what you, the, the sound you hear SpongeBob say is like that dolphin oh, sound. The, yes, and it's just them in essence like cussing for an entire That's episode. True. And it took me a long time to be like, oh, that was a <laughs> funny way for them to like yeah, put they, cussing into that. They world. definitely put how in the world did the they envelope do that? Yeah. when it comes to bringing adult humor, I guess, into it. it. Into it, like a, what was. Probably a kid's show, but I wouldn't want my kids to watch it now. If I was being honest, See, like there I, we go. I think it looks. I think it's probably like pretty dumb. <laughs> oh, for sure. You're, they're not quote. learning anything. No. for sure. Well, that's it for our aftercast. Hope you've had a great time, and we'll see you next time. Woo.